we talked about how the Bible tells a story. Right, lots of little pieces that together tell us one epic story leading to Jesus. The story starts in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. Is that when Adam and Eve listened to the serpent and disobeyed God? Right, but God's response to this tragedy is a promise. A promise? To send the Messiah to rescue us from the corrupt mess we've gotten ourselves into. And don't forget about the talking snake. Yeah, this is a really strange story. Speaking of strange stories, I wonder what Sheriff Locke and the Kingdom Seekers are up to. Cricket Creek is a quiet little town. There's a gazebo and a post office and a burger stand that serves homemade root beer. If you stay long enough, you will discover an old submarine hatch in the forest behind the town. Open the hatch and you will find a ladder that leads deep underground into a secret bunker. Welcome to Cricket Creek, home of the Kingdom Seekers. Okay, so the answer to the riddle takes us to Messenger Road. Right, but before we continue with the mystery, let's check in on Zack's latest invention, frozen slime. Did you say frozen slime? Mmm, you're not going to eat that, are you? Why? You want one? I'd like to present to you my latest and greatest invention. It's the frozen slime machine. Frozen slime? You're not gonna drink that, are you? <laughs> I'm offering the first ever cup of frozen slime to, you guessed it, my little sis. Go on, try it. I... I better get that. Go for Allie. Hey, David. Wait, wait, a what? Tell them I made a frozen slime machine. Sorry, Zach just wants me to tell you that he made a slime machine. Frozen slime. A frozen slime machine. Wait, where? How did a snake get in the... Okay, I'm on it. Sheriff Flock and the other secrets were making a house call. House call? Apparently, Mrs. Porter had a snake problem. She called the sheriff for help. Snake? Mommy, where was Mr. Squishy? Oh, Johnny, honey, uh, go, go and play now, okay? Mommy's, um, handling a situation. Okay. What is that? It's one of, uh, Zach's inventions. He calls it the Seymour Goggles. They're supposed to, you know, help you see more. It's right there, it's right there. Listen guys, I uh, know I should be the one to go in there, but it's just, I have this condition. Condition? Snake sighting syncope. What? Syncope. It means you uh, faint at the sight of a snake. Zach's owl will be great for this moment right now. Yeah, don't owls eat snakes? Whatever happens to that thing anyways? The thing's driving me crazy! Ah! Okay, I'll do it. Wait a second, what about your snake syncope? This is thing! Snake sighting syncope, and I'm ready to face my fears. There comes a time in a man's life where he's gotta stand up for what he believes. Where he's gotta rise to the task. He's gotta look that snake in his beady, venomous, ugly, hypno- Sure, sure. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna march right in there and I'm gonna wrangle that snake. Ain't no fear gonna stop me. Now, hand me that ultra thin trash bag. Okay, guys, maybe we should just... 
And he's out. Oh, hey everyone. Welcome back to Zach's Gadget Corner. You know, I've been working on this one gadget that I haven't yet been able to perfect. I like to call it the fix it all. Hey Zach. Hey sis. Did I hear you say fix it all gadget? Yeah, um, it's this thing right here. Uh, but no gadget can fix everything. Well, yeah, that's why I'm inventing one. Unfortunately, it has a few bugs and I have yet to test it. Do you have any problems I can fix for you? Well, I got these donuts for the party, but somebody already ate some. I wouldn't know anything about that, but here, watch this. Zach, now more donuts are missing. Yeah, uh, that's the bug. See, instead of fixing the problem, it kind of multiplies it. That's a pretty big bug. <sighs> the Bible tells us about a huge problem that we all have, and that problem is sin. Fortunately, God has provided a fix for this problem. Jesus gave up his own life on the cross to pay for the price of our sins so that we could be sinless in God's eyes. Accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior won't fix every problem here on earth, but it will fix our greatest problem, which is the sin that separates us from God. Following Jesus helps us to be who God made us to be. Hey, I think I left some napkins in here. Have you seen them? Yeah, you left some over there. Well, I don't see any. Okay, back to the snake dilemma. While the sheriff was taking an unintended nap in the kitchen, the Seekers and Mrs. Porter were brainstorming ways to help. So I say we just go in there with our eyes closed and we just swing at anything that moves. But we'll be moving. Okay, how about we could have like a signal, like um... Or we could just go in there and trap the thing like how we first planned. Wait a minute, is that Mrs. Porter's son with the plastic sword? It is. And is he running to the room with the snake? Is that a... It's, it's a toy? I found Mr. Squishy! Huh. Didn't see that coming. So, the whole time it was... Little Johnny's toy snake, who apparently was named Mr. Squishy. So, the sheriff eventually regained consciousness. He did, and went out a few more times before David could explain to him that it was just a toy snake. Yikes! But they eventually regrouped, headed to Messenger Road to find their next clue. Messenger Road. So, uh, how do we know what we're looking for? I think we'll know when we see it. You okay? Yeah, um, do you get the feeling that someone's watching us? <sighs> Maybe. Under the golden archer, the last of three, the one who seeks will find the key. Golden archers?
There's a crazy story at the beginning of the Bible. Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden. Everything in the garden is great, exactly the way it should be. There is one tree in the garden that God told them not to eat from because it's dangerous and will kill them. They just have to stay away from this one tree and they're fine? Seems simple, but then this crazy talking snake comes into the garden. A talking snake? Yeah, and the snake starts telling Adam and Eve that the fruit from the forbidden tree wouldn't kill them. It would actually make them become like God. Clearly the snake is just defying God's word. They don't eat the fruit, do they? Unfortunately, they do. And because of Adam and Eve's disobedience to God's command, evil and death entered into God's good world. Why is there a talking snake in the garden? I know, it's very strange. What's even more strange is that the Bible doesn't say why or how the snake even got there. The Bible simply introduces us to the snake as this creature that is in rebellion against God. And it wants to get other people to doubt God too, to lead them away from God and to death. Whatever the snake is, it's the source of evil that infects our world and our lives, even still today. But there is still some hope, because right here in this story, God makes a really interesting promise to Adam and Eve. God promises that a son of Eve will come in the future and he will crush the serpent's head and destroy evil at its source. A hero. The ultimate hero. But during this battle, the serpent will bite the heel of our hero. They destroy each other. Right. It's this really strange but beautiful promise. And God just puts it out there with very little explanation. Until the next key moment in the overall story of the Bible, when God singles out this dude named Abraham. God says that goodness and blessing will be restored to all nations of the world through Abraham's family. As we follow this family in the story, we come to Judah, one of Abraham's great grandsons. God promises Judah that a king the whole world will follow is going to come from his family. And this king will bring peace and harmony, that there will be lots of food and milk and honey, and it's all going to be awesome. So a descendant of Judah will be the awesome king. The first king we meet from the line of Judah is King David. David's a hero, so maybe he's the snake crusher. Unfortunately, it turns out that David is infected with the same evil as the rest of humanity. Not only does he not crush the snake, he does some pretty bad things. However, God now makes a promise to David that the true king will come from his line. It's like God continues to pass down this promise from generation to generation. But one by one, each of David's sons turns out to be a total chump. Things get so bad that they run the nation of Israel right into the ground. Then the big bad empire, Babylon, comes and takes them out. Now there are no more kings to fulfill God's promise. Which seems like the whole plan is lost. It does seem lost. Except during these really dark days, there was this crazy group of guys called prophets. These prophets kept talking about how the awesome king is coming. They kept reminding us of God's promise that the king would come to defeat evil and restore the garden. And one of the prophets, Isaiah, tells us more about why the king is bitten by the snake. Isaiah says that the king receives this wound because of humanity's evil and that it kills him. The king dies because of our sin. Then all of a sudden, he comes back to life. Isaiah says it's because he receives this wound that he is able to be a source of healing for other people. Here's something I don't understand. The Old Testament ends before the snake-crushing king even shows up. So, when the New Testament introduces us to Jesus of Nazareth, he's not just some random guy. He is the one who has come to fulfill all the ancient promises. Jesus was from the line of David, Judah, and Abraham. Jesus goes around Israel saying that the goodness of God's kingdom is here now. He stands up to the effects of evil by healing people and forgiving them for their sins. With all the amazing things Jesus was doing, people started believing that he was the promised king. Jesus began telling his closest followers that he would become king and bring peace by taking the burden of humanity's evil. The fatal snake bite wound. Exactly. With Jesus dying and all, It seems like the serpent wins. It does at first, and then the story would be a tragedy, except for what happens next. Jesus rises from the dead. So now, Jesus has the power over evil and death. The rest of the New Testament says that Jesus' power over evil and death is now available to us, so we can stand up to the effects of evil in our life. Then, why is there still death and evil in the world all around us? I mean... It's still a big problem. 
That's where the end of the biblical story comes in. It describes a day when Jesus comes back and finishes the job. He destroys the snake once and for all. Jesus defeats evil and restores the goodness of the garden here on earth. Jesus never sinned. He took the punishment for our sins. Why did Jesus have to take our punishment? I mean, why did there have to be a punishment at all? Because God is loving, but he is also just. Think about it. A just and fair God can't let evil continue. So he provided a way for us to be forgiven for our sins. By accepting Jesus as our King and Savior. That's right. Jesus will return to defeat evil once and for all, to heal the world and to set us free from sin and death. Then the goodness of God's world can be restored through God's chosen Savior, Jesus. The Messiah.